It's been a while, Matt. It's been a while. It has. It has. We should really do this more often. I think we do it too often already. Yeah. You're going to have to speak up. I can't hear you. <laughs> I wasn't saying anything. That's why you can't hear me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is unusual. What, me not saying anything? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> the amount of episodes I've sat through just listening to you yabber, yabber, yabber on. Me? Yeah. I occasionally get to chip in, you know. <laughs> Fuck. Fine, do you want to do this episode? Go ahead, Matt. Lead this episode. <laughs> Go on. No, I've led a few. I led the French ones. <laughs> they were your choice. <laughs> True. I did not pick them, did I, Matt? No, no. I we didn't. have equal rights here. <laughs> yeah. And you pick probably more than I do. Yeah. I picked the Daubney one, didn't I? Yeah, and the Sophie Blanchard. Yeah. Hey, Matt, we're so popular on YouTube, we keep getting people spamming us. Do you? Yeah, yeah, it's like really annoying. I get a new email every day. It's like, hi, Doc Seduction. I really liked your song, which again is like the first, first way you can tell they're spam. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I've been sent to your spam folder. Can you unmark me as spam and take a look at this link? I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm not going to do that. In- Instagram's one of the worst for those spam kind of things. Like, um, oh yeah, I keep getting random followers. Yeah, the the, what the worst thing I saw was someone. You know, around the time of those terrorist attacks. Someone which posted one? A, well, one of them. I can't remember which one precisely, okay. but it's during that time of the terrorist attacks. Um, someone posted a photo of, like, you know, some scene where, you know, obviously people were running away or something like that. And this spam commented this, but this photo is beautiful. And, like, yeah, you kind of you misjudged that one, haven't you? That's a bot, Matt. That's a bot. That's got to be a bot. Yeah. I don't think anyone could sit around manually doing that and not realise, ah, uh, this is a bad idea. Yeah. But spam and also, is the same. Yeah, that's why bots don't work, because also, I like your song. Really, these episodes are like around an hour long. What song is an hour long? Unless we're doing classical music. And sometimes in, like, the 80s, those guitarists like to do their solos for about half an hour. <laughs> true yeah oh we could do intro music <laughs> is it that time that we've run out of things to talk about again <laughs> i was just thinking music was a good kind of segue to intro music okay fine matt if the intro music is that important to you right go ahead just do it just fucking do it i'm fine i, I, I don't know why you're making such fuss about the intro music yeah i, I never just brought it. it up i just you know sitting here and just just do just do it <laughs> You've brought it up now. It's like the elephant in the room. You have to do it now. I have to. What? You want me to shout it? Uh, do whatever you like. Just get it over and done with. I'm not going to shout. I'm just saying. Don't shout. Don't fucking shout then, Matt. Intro music. Where we talk about stuff. You happy now? Is it over? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hate that intro music. It causes so many problems. Like, either we don't want to do it, or we can't decide who's going to do it. Yeah. At some point, I think we're going to just do away with the intro music. You know when a TV show has too many minutes in the episode, and they have to get rid of the intro sequence? We should be like that. Yeah. Except we're not on a time limit, so it would take the piss if we did that. Or we could just do, like, something like the news and just have a few beeps, and then just... Get on with it. The beeps could be your dogs barking. We'll get them involved. But then you're no better than those real housewives or the Katie Prices that get their kids involved in their reality TV shows. Sick yeah. bastard. Also, I, I can't make my dogs bark on, like, command. Well, they're terrible dogs then, aren't they? Like, what if someone tried burgling the house? I'd have to somehow kind of get a dog on the TV because that make, that does make my dogs bark. So to make them bark is you just need a picture of a dog, really. Uh, it needs to be a bit more than that. It may be a video on my phone of a dog. That might work. But then they, they have to be looking at it to bark. They can be a bit dumb sometimes. Anyway, speaking of a dog, what are we talking about this week, Matt? That's a terrible segue. I think that's the best segue you've had. Actually, no, to be fair, that's an insult to dogs. I apologise to dogs all around the world and in space. You, if you said bitch, maybe. Ah, <gasps> yeah, that could have That'd worked. be being rude, though. But again, that is an insult to bitches, because there are plenty <laughs> of bitches that aren't this bad. <laughs> true, true. Uh, I don't think there's a word strong enough in the dictionary. I mean, she has been described as 
the devil, and I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, if a devil existed, he'd certainly want to be friends with her. Certainly not a saint. I mean, <laughs> say that much. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're more saintly than she is. And that's saying something. Yeah. You know, you, you always know in a podcast when we're disgusted about something. That yeah, you know, if we're disgusted about something, then they, these people are really, really fucked up. We pretty much discuss murderers every week, so. Yeah, exactly. To be fair, we are disgusted, but it's just different levels of disgusted every week. Yeah. Sometimes we can see the light about you know funny murderers i don't i can't recall any funny murderers <laughs> right now <laughs> um, maybe failed murderers i don't know but um yeah this one there is no like lightness to it so yeah. we're probably going to try to steer away from all the gruesome details because i don't want to talk about it. it's horrible i think if you look it up you'll see why i don't want to talk about it because yeah. i've i've read about it many times over and i don't know why i do it i'm the person that wikipedia's in the night and she travels from page to page and it gets darker and darker like outside as well as you know the, the yeah. stuff that i'm reading and then and then i can't go to sleep and i'm too scared to go to the toilet because that means getting out of my bed in my comfort zone and i can't sleep and then i feel sick and then I'm like, how are there people in this world? If there are people in this world, how is there a God? And, like, it becomes this whole philosophical debate in my mind. Yeah. Basically, what you're saying is you spend a lot of time on the dark web, don't you, Tarman? Yeah? I don't know how to get to the dark web. Like, everyone talks about it. I'm like, what is the dark web? How do you get to it? Like, the extent of my knowledge is Wikipedia, YouTube, Google, SoundCloud, iTunes, and that's about it. And the Facebook as well, but I don't do that personally. I use Twitter. Yeah. I'm very, very limited with my internet prowess. My friend said he, he once watched a video about how you meant to enter into it or something like that. I don't think I want to because I think the regular internet is scary enough sometimes. Yeah. I've heard about some of the stuff that's on there as well. I'm like, More like trading children and porn, child pornography and snuff films and stuff. I don't want to be involved in that. Yeah. That and you get arrested just for, like, looking at it. Yeah. I'm fine with, with watching funny videos on YouTube. Yeah, you're fine with threatening your dogs on YouTube. Anyway. I don't do that. Not on YouTube, I don't. Right, okay. Just in this podcast, then. I wouldn't call it threatening. I would I would say politely We have audio proof, so like... Matt, that is out there now. <laughs> Yeah, but I, uh, I was saying I was going to kill them affectionately, basically. I think I think that's what I was trying Speaking to of about. killing them affectionately, what are we talking about this week? <laughs> Carla. Some stupid, evil woman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that, should that be the name of her episode? Yeah, a.k.a. Carla Halmoka, is it? Hamolka, I think Hamolka. it's pronounced. Hamolka. Hamolka. So if you've not heard of the name Carla Hamolka, you should, you should have done. Really, because she's out there, which is what this episode's about. In Canada, we should say. In Canada. Well, she's travelled a lot, actually, so you never yeah. know. The murders happened in Canada, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Good. Okay, so Carla Hamoka was born on the 4th of May, 1970. And people claim she seemed like a normal human being, normal teenager, very popular. Following high school, she worked at a vet's office, surgery. At the age of 17, she met a man called Paul Bernardo, who I hope you'd heard of, probably. You you hadn't actually heard of either of these two people until I told you, right? Yeah, no, I haven't. I mean, but I, I, don't, I don't go kind of researching murderers like you do. So. It's not research when it's out there. You make it sound weird. It's not right out there in the papers, though, is it? Well, no, because it happened a while ago. Well, there you go, then. Right. Okay, anyway. On October the 17th, 1987... Carla, who was 17 at the time, met Paul Bernardo, who was 23 at the time. On the date that they'd met, she had no idea that he was a serial rapist known as a Scarsborough rapist. He'd actually been raping since May of that year, 1987. Wow. Do you know how many people do you know he'd raped at that point? At that point, I think the confirmed rapes were five. Wow. Confirmed rapes, by the way, as the Scarsborough rapist. For one of those rapes, someone else got sent to prison and didn't actually get cleared until 2006 when Paul finally admitted it. 2006, the rapes happened in 1987. Um, the person that was convicted was called Anthony Hanemeyer. Yeah. I think that's how you say his name. Yeah. 
no, not five rapes, sorry, four. Did I say five before or did I say four? You said five. Oh, sorry, four. Makes all the difference, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's damaging lives. I mean, yeah. one, a million, it doesn't really matter. You shouldn't fucking do it. Yeah, it could have been five, so you never know. To be honest, it's probably more, because I don't yeah. think he just, out of the blue, just started raping people. At that point in October 1987, he met Carla and... They had an instant attraction. They had sex the same day, which is very, very classy. <laughs> yeah, that's very quick. Yeah. He, he didn't look all that attractive to me. Apparently, he was very charming because for the Scarsborough rapes in Canada, that was actually quite a big deal. Yeah. So there had been a task force set up. Uh, DNA samples had been taken from over 100 people. And Paul was one of them because there was the composite sketch at some point released. A couple of witnesses had said that is Paul Bernardo. So he'd gone in. He'd been interviewed by the police, but the police found him more trustworthy than the witnesses and let him go. They had his DNA sample on file, but they didn't actually test it until much, yeah. much later, around the time that the thing started getting really, really dark. Yeah, so they had a chance to stop him. They had a chance to stop him, yeah, yeah. but they didn't test the DNA until a couple of years later. Yeah, idiots. <laughs> yeah, so within months they were engaged because Carla gave in to his sexual desires and seemed to relish in it, which is gross. It was, actually, it would have been fine if he could take it out on her. She could be submissive, but it didn't stop. The rapes didn't stop. If anything, they grew more vigorous and the attempted rapes were more vigorous. And as Matt knows now, it got worse. Yeah. Eventually, they graduated onto murder. Do you want to know one of their first murder victims, Matt? Yeah, yeah, go on then. Carla had a little sister, Tammy, who was only 15 years old. And Paul had a fascination with the 15-year-old Tammy, even though he was dating the Carla. The Carla. I'll just call her the Carla. She's not really a person, <laughs> so I don't need to call her by name. I'll just call her the Carla. The Carla. And he was upset that the Carla was not a virgin when they met. So for their wedding... Carla decided to give Paul her sister's virginity. And they eased into that. I mean, first he'd spy on her, he'd masturbate over her, he'd look through her blinds, and Carla helped him by breaking the blinds so he could watch her undress. He tried raping her in the summer of 1990. They drugged her and he started raping her, but then she woke up. Eventually, just before Christmas, December the 23rd, she'd stolen some tranquilizers from her office at the vet's. She drugged Tammy and he proceeded to rape her, as did she, and they recorded it, as they did with a lot of their crimes. Eventually, Tammy started throwing up and choked on her own vomit, but her vomit actually burnt the side of her face. So you can tell there was acid or stomach acid or something like that. Yeah. So that should have really been picked up on. At this point, they panicked. They dressed her, put her back into her room, cleaned up, and then called an ambulance. Tammy never regained consciousness and died later that night in hospital. And the police didn't think it was at all suspicious that they were doing laundry in the middle of the night, how they seemed to be fine about their little sister slash sister-in-law dying. It was all good. And it was ruled an accident, even though she had burn marks on her cheek. I did read in one article, I think it was in the Toronto Sun or something like that, that one officer did have, like, was slightly suspicious about the chemical burn, that, that his superior overruled him, that he didn't seem bothered by the chemical burn, which is odd. I think they just want to close cases, really. Yeah. Or I make a problem when they don't have to, which yeah. is wrong, but a lot of people do that. Yeah. Like, have you, when you were a kid, did you ever break something accidentally and just put it back where you found it? Just pretend that you didn't do it, so... Hopefully no one will ever notice. And eventually someone noticed and you were in shit. Yeah. I mean, obviously this is worse. He's not a child and it's not like a broken figurine. Yeah. It's the death of a little girl. Yeah. I, I heard something quite disturbing also that they did in another article. And that is not long after this happened, Carla and Paul were having sex and... Carla was holding up a photo of Tammy. Oh, yeah, and she used to dress up as Tammy as well. Yeah, and stuff like that, and that's, that's kind of weird shit, that is. It's disgusting. Yeah, it's sick. These people have no souls. Yeah. They killed someone, they raped her and killed someone, and they didn't feel anything about it. Yeah. Like, at least some like, murderers actually feel guilt. This woman did not, and neither did the man, it seems. But it turns out the man's a psycho, so... 
of course he's not going to feel anything. Yeah. Fun enough, she's not a psycho. People have spoken to her. She's taken tests. She's not a psycho. So she's doing this in her right fucking mind. Yeah, although like, they think she's got some kind of issue, hasn't it? Narcissistic personality disorder, probably. Yeah, it's something like that the, you particularly fall in love with dangerous people i think was the apparently thing. yeah she's attracted to s- sexual violence yeah which doesn't make her sane or nice to be around yeah you just gotta hope she doesn't meet someone like paul again mm. well if it was up to me she wouldn't meet anyone again but <laughs> yeah. you know how that turned out yeah so not long after this paul was angry at carla because he lost his plaything in tammy yeah, that's what she should be angry at. <laughs> Not the fact that she's dead. The fact that you don't have a sex toy anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I should have added, they moved out of Carla's parents' house at this point to leave them alone with their grief, to let them deal with their grief. Because, you know, it's hard to deal with your grief when you have murderers around. Yeah. The people that murdered your children. Yeah. Yeah. So not long after that, Carla had befriended a girl who's only known as Jane Doe. She hasn't made herself public. And the girl idolised her because she's an older girl. She's t- paying attention to this young 15-year-old girl. And eventually one day she took her out, drugged her again, took her home, and she was raped brutally and they recorded it. Lovely people. Yeah. So the next day, it's weird though because she didn't know. Like Tammy, the first first time Paul raped her, I don't think she noticed either. This Jane Doe, she didn't notice. She knew it was sore. But she thought it was just from the drinking and stuff. Yeah. So she didn't know that she'd even been raped. So, like, a lot of people out there could have been raped and they don't even know it. Yeah, that's going to be awful. I think that has. Yeah, because I think it's just because you're not expecting it, so you don't think that's what it is. Yeah. Especially these young girls as well. They might think, oh, it's a side effect from my period. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, it's a nasty way of doing it, isn't it? Drugging people. Yeah. So, yeah, so she felt sick and sore, but she didn't know what had happened. And luckily, she sort of managed to get out of it unscathed, which is good for her, considering what happens next. She'd seen the couple's faces, knew who they were, and she lived to tell about it. Yeah, some weren't so lucky. The only way they actually knew about that rape was because of the videotapes. Yeah, unfortunately, they didn't They didn't discover them for a little while, though, did they? So. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to breeze through this and get to that bit. Okay. So, following this, on June 15th, 1991, so about six months after the rape-slash-murder of Tammy. Paul and Carla stalk Leslie Mahaffey, and I think she was actually only 14 at the time, so even younger. Yeah. And they raped and tortured her over a few days and eventually killed her just before the Hamolkas, so Carla's parents and sister, were due to visit. So they killed her. And to get rid of the body, they decided to encase her in concrete, cut her up and encase pieces of her in concrete, and dump her into a river. Not a river, sorry, a lake. The Lake Gibson River. Yeah. Well, so you're not going to show that kind of respect to someone when they're alive. You're not going to show it mm. to them when they're dead, are they? I guess. Yeah. So Carla and Bernardo eventually get married on June 29th, 1991, which is also when the first set of remains of Leslie's body have been found. And funny, funny, it's not a funny fact, actually. The only way they actually identified her was because of her orthodontic, well, it's described as orthodontic appliance, so I'm assuming brace. So if it wasn't for that, she wouldn't have been identified. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and by the way, they also taped these ones as well, that rape and torture session. Mm, lovely. They, Of course they taped that one. I did they actually watch that stuff back? Probably. It's their way of getting off, because some people just make regular sex tapes of themselves, which is fine each to their own i don't judge that's what you want to do behind closed doors that's fine yeah but you know that first of all not consensual second of all brutal third of all rape yeah. fourth murder so following that bernardo and carla abduct Kristen french who's only 15 years old and they did it in broad daylight outside of a church, and there were witnesses. Wow. <laughs> exactly, that's ballsy. So Carla had come out and asked for directions, and Paul had, like, knocked her over the head and dragged her away into a van, and people saw it, and the, her parents reported it within really quickly, actually. Yeah. There was a whole search party going out looking for her. Did I mention how he kidnapped Leslie? He basically, she had been locked out of her house outside curfew, and then he'd asked, I think it's that he'd asked a directions type thing again, and then he sort of dragged her away. So a similar kind of thing, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and he tried to blindfold them, 
And, yeah, that doesn't work, and he kills them anyway. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit the reasoning for killing them? Who cares about the blindfold? He's just, they're sick bastards, and they killed these little girls. So, yeah, spoiler alert, Kristen French dead. Yeah. So, again, over the course of several days, brutally rape. And it's not just, you know, vaginal rape. It's sodomizing and torture. Both of them rape the, rape the girls and then they kill them. And they, again, videotaping. It's kind of silly if you think about it. Why? Even if they want to watch it back to get their kicks off, right? Yeah. It's evidence that you've committed a brutal crime like the worst crime punishable by law. I, don't, I, I think if they've done it so often by this stage, they, I think they just think they can get away with it by this point. Probably, but they got too cocky. Yeah. So that was in 1992, April 1992, um, and that is the last known murder. Because not long after this, Carla was getting beaten up by Paul, which there's not a nicer person that could happen to. Mm. I'm not saying there's any excuse for domestic violence, but if anyone's going to get beaten up, I'd rather it be her than some innocent woman. I suppose, yeah. Yeah, I'm not advocating it. Yeah. Domestic violence, bad. But Carla is worse. And she seems like a compulsive liar anyway, so there's a chance that he might not have even done it. Who knows? Yeah. Probably did it, though, um, because she was covered in bruises and stuff, and her co-workers had commented on it and gotten her family involved, and they had removed her from the situation. Yeah. Around this time... They finally got round to testing that DNA that I told you about at the beginning of the story. So this was years later. <laughs> yeah. They finally got round to testing that DNA and they found a match and they started investigating Paul and they went to talk to Carla. Carla realised the game was up. He, she was soon going to get found out. She confessed to family members that he was the Scarsborough rapist and he'd killed these people, these girls, these little, these children. Let's just say these children. And then they urged her to come forward so she came up with some sob story saying that she was a beaten woman. She, well, actually, no, she didn't really come forward first. She went to see a lawyer, of course. Innocent people just go to, straight to the lawyer first, right? Yeah. I've heard that. If you're innocent, you go directly to your lawyer rather than the police. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So innocent people always go to the lawyer. And she she made up this sob story about how she was abused and he pushed her into it and she was she didn't consent to any of it which, of course, was a bull-faced lie. So on this basis, at that point in time, the police hadn't found any evidence, really, about the murders and the rapes, other than the DNA evidence, but they had no evidence on the murders. And even though they'd been searching the house for two months, the house they both shared for two months, they still had come up empty. So she was offered a deal. Uh, her lawyer tried to get her no time in jail because her lawyer's a stand-up guy. <laughs> but they said, well, no, she has to get something because she was involved in the murders of three girls, which is uh, fair enough. But how many years do you think she got, Matt? How many years? You're asking me? Yeah. Is it something like 12? 12 years for manslaughter. 12. For manslaughter, even though she brutally raped and murdered these victims alongside her husband. But obviously, at this time, the police didn't know that. Why didn't they know that, Matt, I hear you ask? Yeah. Because the tapes had been hidden by Paul Bernardo's lawyer. So that actually probably fucked over Paul Bernardo even more because they could have had equal responsibility at that point and he wouldn't have had all the shit piled on him Yeah. because they couldn't unleash their theory on Carla. So these tapes come to light way after she'd already signed the deal and the police realised, oh, she lied, she's more involved in this than we thought. And then... They had to honour the deal anyway, even though she lied. I think this is the most... It's something that infuriates the people of Canada. Yeah. She lied, yet they honoured the deal. But she basically perjured herself, right? Yeah. Well, they like, all Had she said all this stuff in court, though? Yeah. I have no idea, but she fucking lied. Isn't lying to a police officer sometimes. Perjury's technically crime. only if you say it in court, though. I think. Yeah, but there's obstruction of justice as well. Yeah. She obstructed justice by lying and obstructed police officers from arresting her. Yeah. Maybe they didn't have that law in Canada or something. They should have that law everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah, she got 12 years. And to be honest, it looks like those 12 years were a cakewalk because she was in like a medium security prison, even though she was a violent offender, purely because she was done for, she was like sentenced for manslaughter, which is just a technicality. Yeah. And she may be a psycho, she may not. There's nothing saying that she is. So that makes her the worst type of person. She's totally in control of everything she does. 
her mind and body. She was in prison for 12 years, minimum security, she, medium security, sorry. She engaged in sexual relationships with other inmates. And do you want to know what's funny? She's embarrassed about being in a sexual relationship with another woman, but she's not embarrassed about being a race-pissed serial killer. Yeah, skewed priorities there. Right? Yeah, I know. She, she didn't want her family to know about the sexual relationship she's having with another woman in prison. But it's okay that her family know that he, she raped and murdered her little sister. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't mention... Yeah, so the police caught up with them in about 1993. Did I say that before? Um... I don't think you did, maybe, actually. Yeah, the police caught up with them in 1993, and it took a few years, as it usually does, and Carla was sentenced to 12 years in prison, and apparently she did everything that she was asked to do other than something that was made for a male sex offender program because she wasn't male and she wasn't a convicted sex offender. I went to punch her in the fucking face when I read that. I went to punch her in the fucking face. She Clearly doesn't give two shits about what she's done. Yeah. And she was released in 2005. There were conditions to her release, which were she had to tell the police her home address, work address, and who she lives with. She was required to notify police as soon as any of the previous ones had changed. She was required to notify police of any change of her name, which also she shouldn't be allowed to change her name, in my opinion, if she's a convicted... Well manslaughter it doesn't matter still murder okay and the fourth one is if she planned to be away from her home for more than 48 hours she had to give a 72 hour notice she couldn't contact paul bernardo the families of leslie mahaffey and Kristen french and that woman known as jane doe or any other violent criminals she was forbidden to be with people under the age of 16 and to consume drugs other than prescription medication. She was required to continue therapy and counselling. She couldn't let that be, so she did fight pretty much everything. Yeah. Even though before her release she said, if everyone wanted me to stand on my head 24-7, I'd do it. <laughs> Clearly she was bullshitting, as she has done a lot in the past. Yeah. So she fought... All of it, and then eventually a judge overturned it towards the end of 2005, in November 2005, and she was allowed to roam free. She got married to her lawyer's brother, and we know her lawyer was a stand-up woman trying to get her no time for the crime she committed. Yeah. She had three kids, which I'm wary about, because she shouldn't be allowed to have kids or be anywhere near kids because her main issue was the fact that she raped and murdered kids. Yeah. And she's been able to move around a lot. There's been reports of her living in Quebec directly after she was released, and that was purely because that was a French-speaking part of Canada. So she thought they were less likely to know about her than the English-speaking world. She also moved to the Antilles, which is an archipelago in the Caribbean. Yes, I googled that, Matt. <laughs> Um, she also moved to Guadeloupe and then back to Quebec and Montreal. She's also been able to go under different names. She's gone under Leanne Till, which she changed after she'd been released from prison. But funny enough, Leanne Till surname was actually decided between her and Paul Bernardo many years earlier because they wanted to pay homage to a serial killer in a film. Lovely. Yeah. I bet her current husband feels great about that. So she's known as Leanne Till and also Leanne Bordeles or Bordele. I don't know how to say it, after her current husband, Thierry. And so, yeah, she had three kids, and her last, the last known reporting of her states that she was working as a volunteer in her kids' school, and that was in May 2017, which also caused a ruckus, because why the fuck is she anywhere near a school? Yeah. Heck, she wasn't allowed to move prisons, because the one that she wanted to move to was near a school, and then she tried to sue the government for it. Yeah. I was like, really? You're really going to sue the government? You do as your past and what you've done. Yeah. This woman has no shame. Yeah, sure, in paper she's paid her debt to society, but she hasn't, because she lied. She lied to get a reduced sentence. She should still be rotting away until her dying days. But to be honest, even if she was, it seems like prison was a holiday camp for her. So she, it was no punishment whatsoever. Yeah. If anything, it was beneficial to her because if she had been out in public, she would have got killed. Yeah. It was good that she was locked away because it gave people time to simmer down. Yeah. I think I, I was reading some article where one of the lawyers for the victim's families was saying she hasn't really served her time, though. She only really served 12 years. Yeah, yeah. that's not... That's what saying every every girl that they've killed is worth four years. Yeah. And it wasn't even just the killing. To be honest, it sounds horrible, but the killing is putting them out of their misery. They raped and tortured them. 
beforehand. Yeah. I'd probably want to die if that was happening to me. True. And it's disgusting. And she's not even apologised to the family. She hasn't even tried. I think she still says to this day that she had nothing to do with it. And she said that she has nothing to do with her sister's death. Her mum still seems to have contact with her as well, which I find... I, I find puzzling, but I kind of get, because clearly her fucked up child killed her younger child but the younger child is gone now so she has to hold on to the older child and pretend to believe her in her heart of hearts she probably knows that her child is a wrong one but she wants to believe just so she doesn't lose this other child yeah <sighs> basically with carla she should just still be locked up i mean i don't know what else i think i have loads of things that i wanted to say uh, because I have so many different notes on my little sheets of paper. I've got, like, booklets and booklets. But all of it is basically insults to Carla. <laughs> like, you should see my booklet now, because I haven't even said, like, a third of what I was going to say. Mm. Uh, I'll send you pictures at some point. But I've got so many notes on so many different pages, and they're all, like, f- at least 13, 14 pages long. Yeah, because um, one of the articles I was reading was about the time of this, uh, the charity work, where she's doing the charity work. Mm. Apparently some politician came out and said, oh, he said, he said it in a bad way, but he said maybe forgiveness is due or something like that. And you basically have to move on and forget. But like the, one of the family's members, I think it's the uh, Christian French. I, I think her dad said, what's there to forgive? Though? Like uh, she hasn't shown any like remorse. She hasn't. She's denied everything, even though there are tapes out there. Yeah. What do they need to do? Do they need to publish the tapes? Well, no, no one can actually see that. It will make your stomach turn. And yeah. t- the tapes were destroyed in 2001 because they were so disturbing and they were like you know what we don't actually need these anymore the trial is over yeah let's just get rid of them but they still got the jurors reactions to the tape so they could easily release that if they wanted to yeah okay so if she wants for forgiveness she has to go to all those families and ask for it in her hands and knees that's the only way the world can forgive her because she hasn't shown any remorse she hasn't even served a fraction of time that paul's gonna serve and they were both co-conspirators he didn't pressure into shit I firmly believe he was fucked up, right? He was raping people, but he didn't start killing until Carla got involved. Yeah. And to be fair, there is actually discrepancies on who killed the girls. Apparently, Paul's saying it's Carla because Carla was jealous. I would genuinely believe that. There's even a story that's actually quite fairly recent saying that she overdosed. She gave Tammy a drug overdose on purpose because of the amount that was in her system. There's no way it would have been an accident. Yeah, you've got... It's got to be a weird relationship where your your husband, well, your boyfriend at that stage is sexually obsessed with your sister. Mm. I could totally believe that she would have done it because she's jealous. Because before her, the only known time frame we know is from May of that year of 1987. He could have been doing it for a long time before. But before her, he she, he hadn't killed anyone. And he, at that point, seemed like he was just into sex, rough sex, rape, unconsensual but there's nothing to say that he was actually into murder. And she seems like a narcissistic sociopath. Like, even in prison, the relationship she's cultivated, it seemed like she just wanted people to be obsessed with her. So yeah. I I could totally buy that she had killed them. But then, obviously, she's saying that he killed them. Yeah. Wasn't she sending letters to some serial killer as well? Yeah, I think she had a relationship with someone on death... Not death row, someone sentenced to life in prison. Yeah. I guess they must have prisons next to each other. But, like, she's stripped by a fence and they were touching each other or something. Oh, that's... Yeah, I I think I read about that. It sounded really creepy, that did. Yeah. And this was when she was in the lesbian relationship with her... The person that was she was in prison with... Um, Finally enough, the person that she was in prison with actually got rearrested and sent to jail because she wanted to be with Carla. So clearly she wants people obsessed with her. Yeah. So I I don't know what's wrong with her, but she there's no way she should be out in public. And I don't understand how she's able to have children. I hope social services are watching that house. I don't understand how she's been allowed to change her name and move around to wherever she feels like it and just get on with things when these other families have lost children and she doesn't give a shit yeah one of the articles i i was reading like but also that decision to have children you know that conversation is going to have to come up they're going to mm. find out about what she's done well no if she keeps changing her name and moving around but yeah but they're going to hear eventually you know this is what mummy did also another reason i think she's more involved in the murders than she admits is paul started to admit to stuff that he's done before so if he really actually did the murders all by himself. He already knows he's going to prison. 
for it. Well, he is in prison. He really knows he's going to be there for life. He could easily come out and publicly say, no, actually, I did it all. I killed them. But he hasn't. He's still saying, no, it was Carla. He has literally nothing to lose. Yeah. He's admitting other crimes that he's committed. He's resigned to his fate. There's nothing to stop him from telling the truth. If it was yeah. him, he would have admitted it at this point, I think. So I think that's damning on Carla's side. I think there's no way. Even if she didn't actually kill them, she helped. She helped Paul. And there's no excuse for it. I don't care if she was beaten up. She took enjoyment in it. She was going down on her own sister while she's drugged out just before she died because of an overdose she'd given her. Yeah. This, she's a sick, sick woman. She shouldn't be allowed to walk in public. And if I was living in Montreal, I'd carry around tomatoes just in case. By that, I mean I would throw tomatoes at her. I'd make sure they're rotten, rotten tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah. I find it so fucked up that she's not on a list anyway. She can't be on a list because she wasn't tried as a sexual predator it's horrible so she can live anywhere she can live around the corner from you and you've got like a 14 year old daughter it's disgusting and i don't fucking understand the canadian courts i mean she lied why the hell do you have to honor an agreement with someone that lies you don't have to yeah you can overturn that shit get some judge to sign off on overturning that shit it's not fair yeah. on the families involved it's not fair on the greater public that she's allowed out of prison in 12 years it's disgusting. Yeah, see, that's that's why I, why I didn't understand when you first told me about that. Why don't they just try sentencing her again afterwards or something like that? Apparently she'd given them enough information to meet her end of the deal. So they had to meet their end of the deal because it was like a contract. Yeah. But I say, yeah, she's meet, met her end of the deal by t giving you enough information, but she's also mid misled you. In my head, that nullifies it. But apparently they couldn't go back on that, even though she fucking lied through her fucking teeth. Yeah. I suppose that's the risk you've got to take in some ways. Yeah, but the fucking lawyer, his name was Murray, right? Yeah. Paul Bernardo's lawyer. So he sat on those tapes. It was actually turned out worse for his client to sit on those tapes. Yeah. Because if they had been tried equally, they could have equally shared the blame. And maybe Paul Bernardo wouldn't have been sentenced harsher. But this Murray guy, he sort of got punished for withholding evidence and, you know, having child pornography, which that was. But it got acquitted. So, like, no, it seems like everyone's gone unpunished here, apart from Paul. Yeah. Which, yeah, rightly so, he's in prison, but there's so many other people that need to be alongside him. Yeah. Yeah, this this case just, it makes my blood boil. What I found, like, strange as well is how, how normal they look as well. Yeah, but the messed up ones do look like the most normal ones. Yeah. It's so, like, like their, their wedding photos remind me, like, of wedding photos, like, my own family and stuff like that. Like, no, I think Carla has them eyes. Does she? Creepy eyes. They're like unmoving. It's like she can't show emotion with her eyes. Yeah, maybe. Mm. I'm not good at reading that kind of stuff, so, so. Yeah. Whereas Paul's smile is creepy. But I guess that's because I know what's really going on there. Yeah. Anyway, so she's fucked up. She's walking around Canada like nothing ever happened and it hasn't affected her whatsoever. And... Canada is still affected by it. I mean, there was like a TV... Well, it wasn't a TV movie. It was a B movie. I think I told you about it. Oh, made yeah. Made about her and they tried filming it in Canada and no one wanted to work on it. So they had to film it in the US instead, which is weird because usually US productions are made in Canada. <laughs> it's shocking. And this woman should still be locked up. I hope her kids grow up to find out what a sick, sick woman their mother is. I mean, not because I want... Because it's not their fault. I mean, yeah. I don't want them to be affected personally but they are going to be affected anyway so just so she could feel the pain of losing a child but then if she is a psychopath she won't care but i hope her kids find out and get out of that house quick time yeah like at this point i think the oldest one is 10 yeah they need to get out of that house as soon as possible I don't yeah. understand how her husband could bear to be in the same room as her and have children with her and live in a house with her and their children. I don't know. Maybe he sees her side of the story, though. What do you mean, her side of the story? Well, maybe he believes what she says. <sighs> Anything you can... I can think of. I don't know. Well, his brother is was her lawyer. Yeah. And I don't think her lawyer believes her side of the story because why would he, she try and make a deal so quickly? Why would she eagerly accept 12 years which granted is a lot if you're actually going down for manslaughter yeah 12 years is a lot for manslaughter it's usually about seven isn't it i think so so that is a lot of time yeah so you know someone's hiding something if they're gleefully accepting 12 years yeah basically people like this carla hamolka paul bernardo they make me wish there was a hell just so they could be eternally in pain yeah she's not in pain right now her life is dandy but i hope 
there i actually she makes me wish there is an afterlife just so she can burn in hell yeah i i just think it, it's risky though isn't it that one of the things they're saying is that she's like attracted to violence and stuff like that mm. you've just got hope she doesn't meet anyone who's violent really mm. i think she's because she knows that people are on her. I mean, you got reporters trying to track her down as well. Mm. Do you think she's going to be doing that at this point? I mean, if she did, she's probably going to hide it better and maybe not videotape herself doing it. Yeah. That was the one downfall last time, wasn't it? Yeah. I think I read they, that someone was saying it'd be very difficult for, for her to re-offend now. Though. Yeah, which is good, but also shouldn't be out in public. True. So basically, Carla Homolka, Yeah. you're the opposite of, like, Gary Dotson. I don't, you weren't here, Matt. I think that was just me and Chris. A uh, miscarriage of justice. Yeah. He was in prison for a crime he didn't commit. You weren't in prison long enough for crimes that you did commit. So that's like a reversal of the miscarriage of justice. Well, no, it's kind of a miscarriage of justice for the families of the victims. Yeah. So, yeah, she's an example of a miscarriage of justice, just not the one you're used to. And uh, she should just rot. She should rot. I hope she rots. And I hope... I just want to see her on her hands and knees and begging for forgiveness from those families. She's ruined their lives. Yeah. They're never going to get their children back again. I just want to see her pay for it and suffer, and she hasn't. It's not fair. Like, she tortured these girls and raped and tortured and sodomized and filmed them doing it, which filming it is very degrading anyway, on top of everything else, and then she murdered them. Like... This woman, there's no such thing as forgiveness for her. That's it. I take all the forgiveness shit back. There's no such thing as forgiveness. She can't be forgiven. There are some things that you do that you can't be forgiven for. And I think this is one of them. Or four of them. Not four, sorry, three. Well, four, I guess, if you count Jane Doe. Yeah, yeah. It makes you remember there's a lot of sick people out there sometimes, isn't there? Mm. And most of them look normal. Yeah. I can't believe how he got away with raping people for so long he he carried on raping after after he met carla as well yeah they were raping a lot as well during their relationship and i should i should have said that before but yeah they carried on raping so don't worry their hobby wasn't over yeah i guess it is if like you're doing it in the dead of night and you're an unremarkable looking guy like he was and there was nothing special about him he just looked like a guy yeah so even if someone did a composite sketch it could look like a million other guys Mm. and also like i don't want to sound horrible but didn't he do a few from behind surely they wouldn't have seen him that clearly yeah yeah i think i might have to like end this soon and throw up yeah we have to wash ourselves after this one yeah (sighs) she's disgusting she's a filthy woman not even filthy. Filthy is too good a word for her. I really don't know. I think we should invent a word just for when we talk about people like this. Yeah. I don't know how you could do this to like another human being. Well, another human being is one thing. I don't know how you could do that to your sibling. And then lie to it to your fa- family as well. And just go on like literally nothing has happened and take part in your sick, sick fantasies. Like me and my siblings, we're not exactly close. But if I dated someone that suggested, ah, oh, I want your sibling's virginity, I'm probably more likely to kill him than I am my sibling. Yeah. Because, yeah, we fight and shit, but I'm not going to help you kill any of them. Or rape them. So. Or rape them, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, even people with the harshest relationships, I don't understand how you could even do that and think that. Even if it was a stranger for crying out loud, no, I'm not helping you do that. Yeah. Like the first, the only thing I'm helping you with is, you know, sending you to jail. Yeah. I, mean, I don't understand how anyone could embrace that. There's a darkness in her, I guess. Yeah. You gotta have some kind of deficit somewhere. Mm. I hope she fucking rots. I don't think there's anything else we can say because I just think I'm just gonna keep saying that she needs to rot in hell or rot in prison or worse. Yeah. And I don't. I think that will just get me into trouble, <laughs> which will be funny because. I shouldn't really be getting in trouble. This bitch should be getting in trouble. Yeah. (laughs) And again, sorry, bitches, because most of you aren't even, like, an eighth as bad as this woman. Yeah. To be fair, that's that's an insult to fraction. So not even, like, a 24th as fucked up as this woman. Again, that might be an insult. This can continue forever and ever and ever. (laughs) One sixty-eighth. Anyway. (laughs) Um, I don't really know what they're 
is what more there is to say. I mean, I know we've left out some bits because I did say at the beginning I didn't want to go into every single case, every single murder, every sing, every little detail. Because the one thing that I said before we started this podcast is um, I don't want to do kids. And I think that these girls classify as kids. Yeah. And I get sickened even just thinking about it. That's why we sort of just breeze through it and focused on the fact that she's out there alive and well, living her life when Kristen French, Leslie and Tammy, none of them can do it. And Jane Doe, she hasn't made herself public, but I'm assuming, well, there's no way to go over something like that, is there? No. It's always going to be with you. And yeah. all these other girls that they try to rape or have raped, actually, they've successfully raped many. Yeah. So fuck you, Carla. Fuck you. And I know people think that I use my fuck yous loosely, but I think that's well-deserved, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, no, that is an insult to fucking because, you know, normally that's consensual between two consenting adults and it's not forced and doesn't usually end with murder. So no, I think that's an insult to the word fucking, actually. Yeah. I've, I've hit my limit with fucking. Like, she's too good. She's too good. The The word is too good for Carla. Yeah. Basically, you can't think of any words to describe her. I really, really can't. They really fit the description for her. Like, even the devil, like, the devil isn't actually bad. He just punishes the bad. If you look into the Bible, the devil said, uh, the devil, the Bible says the devil is uh, was only sent to hell because he refused God's orders and loving man more than he loved God himself. So he's not a bad, the devil isn't bad. No, he, well, he just punishes the bad. No, he tempts people to do bad things, though. Well, a chocolate near the cashier, that's also tempting. Doesn't mean you have to fucking do it. I'm, I'm not sure Carla was after a chocolate bar, though. But I know, all I'm saying is that, yeah, there are temptations, but you can resist them. And classify this as a temptation, it's downright fucked up. Yeah, well, some people have fucked up temptations. That's the reality. Mm, and those people should just... I don't understand why we don't do the island thing, okay? I've pitched it before. And I don't understand why, like, the MPs and, you know, the UN hasn't taken it on board. Like, there's loads of tiny islands all over the world. It'll be like what we did with Australia in the, in the beginning. Just send all the criminals there and we'll be fine and dandy. Yeah. Criminals, sociopaths, psychopaths. Actually, no, sociopaths aren't so bad. Psychopath, well, violent psychopaths, not just regular psychopaths, because some psychopaths are fine. Yeah, I think they should do it, because they've got one, like, they've got Guantanamo, haven't they, for terrorists? Yeah, I know. I mean, I think we just send all fucked up people to an island somewhere, and it'll be like, you know, prisons in South America where there are, like, no guards and the prisoners run the place, which is fine because they can't leave, and they just kill each other. Ooh. That way we didn't have to deal with them. And they're, like, in a secluded island somewhere, so they can't come back. We just fly a chopper over, dump them food every now and then, rather than boats, because in case they hijack the boat. I thought it through, Matt. We don't take boats because they might hijack it, so just fly a chopper over and dump it somewhere. Have television cameras as well. It could be a like, reality TV programme then. Yeah, we could earn some money off it as well. It would be great. Yeah. But then also I think that's the stuff the dark web is made of. So, <laughs> so we, it's going to be like back-to-back -back snuff movies. Yeah. And we're going to have a diary room and everything. <laughs> no, no, we're not glorifying these sick bastards, except we just did an episode on them, so... Yeah, I think that's that's all we've got to say on this one there. Isn't it, yeah, because I could rant forever about this person. <laughs> like, Matt, how did I introduce the subject to you? <laughs> I think I just started up like, that fucked up woman, let's just do her, and I just rant about her for an hour. Yeah. I, I, it took you like an hour to get the actual name out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you tell, I think you told me the name, but I didn't have a clue who you were talking about. Oh, and then I, exactly. Basically, we should have really just left it recording the other week. While I was explaining to you and ranting about her, that was basically the same thing as that we've done here right now. Yeah. Except there was probably more information on the rant that I gave you. Yeah. I got distracted today by all my notes saying she's fucked up. A psychopath. <laughs> yeah. And also, archipelago is a group of islands. <laughs> I also googled what archipelago is. <laughs> no, no, no. I googled what Antilles is, and then I got archipelago out of that, and I kind of knew what archipelago was. Yeah. Because I didn't know what Antilles was. I think it's pronounced Antilles. Yeah, you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> yeah, you're worse than, at pronunciation than me. I think we should bid good day. 
Yeah. I think we've probably turned people's stomachs enough. Yeah. So au revoir. Au revoir. Which is probably what they say in Quebec, which Carla loves so much. Yeah, yeah. It's not a great advertisement for Quebec, is it? No. Um, <laughs> I have to, must avoid that. Yeah, we thought Canada was so nice as well. Yeah, but then they have this and then they have the racist people against doctors yeah, fun times, fun times. Again, that's in the outtake, so people still won't understand. <laughs> <laughs> that's if it makes the outtakes. I haven't decided. I've only got loads of clips. Um, anyway, goodbye. Goodbye.